This is a review of the topics from this week. We have rounding, error intervals and exchange rates. Rounding. When we round a number, we are asking what is it closest to. So when we round to the nearest whole number, the question is which whole number is the number closest to? The first one says 8.4 and we want to know is it closer to 8 or is it closer to 9? And what we do, if we're rounding to the nearest whole number, we look at the next one down. So the first decimal place and we say, is it five or above? If it is five or above, we round up. If it isn't, we leave it as it is. So we've got 8.4, so it's not five or above. So it's closer to eight. We leave it as it is. The second one, 53.51. So it's in between 53 and 54 this time. And again, we run to the nearest whole number. So we look at the next one down, which is the first decimal place. Is it five or above? Yes, it is. So we round up. So it's closer to 54. The next question, say round to the nearest 10. So we're looking at the tens column and again, we look at the next column down. So the ones this time, is it five or above? If it is round up to the next 10 up. And if it isn't leave it as it is. So this is five or above. So we're going to round up. So one above 70 or 10 above 70 is 80. So it's closer to 80 than it is to 70 and 236 again we're rounding to the nearest 10 so we look at the next column the one down the ones is it five or above yes it is so round up so 236 is going to round to 240 it's closer to 240 than it is to 230 rounding to the nearest hundred the same thing so we, we want to run to the nearest hundred look at the column down which is the tens and ask is it five or above if it is round up if it isn't leave it as it is so we're rounding up so it's 700 it's closer to 700 than it is to 600 and 347.66 so is it five or above? No, it's not. So leave it as it is. And that's 300. Okay, some for you to try. So pause the video and give them a go. Rounding to the nearest whole number. So 3.59 is going to round up to four. 6.7 is going to round up to seven. And to the nearest 10, put 92, which is going to stay as 90. 184.6, it's going to stay as it is. So that would be 180 to the nearest 10. And the nearest 100, 461 is closer to 500 than 400. And... 535.8 is closer to 500 than it is to 600. Rounding to one decimal place is the same. So this time we want one number after the decimal point. So we look at the second one, the second decimal place. If it's five or above round up. So it is five or above this time. So it's closer to 2.7 than it is to 2.6. We're rounding up. So 2.6 rounds up to 2.7. And the second one, 9.2458. Again, we're running to one decimal place. So look at the next one down. 
If it's five or above, round up. If it isn't, leave it as it is. So we're going to leave this one as 9.2. Rounding to two decimal places just means we want two numbers after the decimal point. So two numbers after the decimal point, and then look at the next one. If it's five or above, round up. So we're going to round up to 7.38. And we're saying it's closer to 7.38 than it is to 2. Point. It's closer to 7.38 than it is to 7.37. And the next one, 1.3589. So the third decimal place is five or above. So round up. So it becomes 1.36. Significant figures. We start counting at the first non-zero number. So the first significant figure is the six tenths. The second one is the eight hundredths. So we want two significant figures. There's two significant figures. We look at the next one. If it's five or above round up. It's not, so it's going to stay at 0 0.68. And 6,594. So the first significant figure is 6,000. The second one's 500. So let's look at the next one. If it's 5 or above, round up. So we're rounding up, so it's 6,600. Okay, and again, some for you to try. So give these ones a go. Rounding to one decimal place, we want one number after the decimal point. So is it closer to 4.6 or 4.7? This one is 4.7. It is five or above. The second one, it's going to be 3.7 or 3.8. Which is it closest to? It is five or above. So it's 3.8 to two decimal places. So this time, again, we're looking at the next one down. So it's going to be 3.57 or 3.58. It is five or above. So it's 3.58. And the next one is going to be 6.52 or 6.53. It's not five or above, so it stays as 6.52. Significant figures. So we start counting at the first non-zero number. So we're going to have the 500 and the 90. Then we look at the next one. So is it closer to 590 or 600? It's a two, so it's going to stay as 590. And... The last one, so we don't count the zeros in front. We start counting at the first non-zero number. So we've got the two hundredths, the four thousandths. So we're looking at the next one. Is it five or above? It is. So it's going to round up to 0 0.025. Error intervals. When we're looking at error intervals, we're looking at numbers that have already been rounded and we're figuring out what it could have been. So a number X is rounded to one decimal place and the result is 6.1. So to one decimal place, the one up is 6.2, the one down is 6.0 and to round to 6.1, it must have been in between 6.05 and 6.15. So that's what our number must have been in between these two values. And we write an error interval using inequalities. So we're going to say our number X is bigger or equal to 6.05. So if it did equal 6.05, if it was exactly halfway, we would round it up to 6.1, and it's less than 6.15. So it can't equal 6.15, but 
because if it was 6.15, we would round it to 6.2. So this is our answer. The second one, a number n is truncated to two decimal places. That means it's been cut off after two decimal places. And the result is 2.73. Write the error interval for n. So it could have been anything that starts with 2.73. So all the way up to 2.74. So it's anything that starts with 2.73. So what could it have been? When it's bigger or equal to 2.73 and less than 2.74. So it can go all the way up to 2.74. It can be 2.73999. But if it becomes 2.74, then it would truncate to 2.74. So it can equal 2.73 and it can't equal 2.74. Okay, two for you to try. So give these a go. Question one, a number X is rounded to one decimal place. The result is 9.5. So it's been rounded to 9.5. What could it have been before it was rounded? Well, it must be in between the two halfway points. If it's closest to 9.5, it must be in between 9.45 and 9.55. And we're going to say it can equal 9.45, but it can't equal 9.55. So it's in between 9.45 and 9.55, but it can equal 9.45 because that would round to 9.5, but not, it cannot equal 9.55, because that would round up to 9.6. And the second one, a number n is truncated to one decimal place. The answer is 8.4. So it's been cut off after one decimal place. So it started with 8.4, and then it could have had any numbers after it. Truncated just means it's been cut off after one decimal place. So it's anything in between 8.4 and 8.5. So it's bigger or equal to 8.4 and less than 8.5. And exchange rates. So this is the last one. A hat costs £22 in the UK. And the same hat costs €25 Euros in Spain. The exchange rate is £1 is equal to €1.11. Is it cheaper in the UK or Spain? So we're going to change our Euros into pounds. We've got pounds and Euros. We know £1 is one euro and 11 cents. And we want to know what 25 euros is in pounds. So to go from one to 1.11, to go from pounds to euros, we multiply by 1.11. One times 1.11 is 1.11. If we want to go back from euros to pounds, we do the opposite of multiplying by 1.11, and that is dividing by 1.11. So to go from 25 euros into pounds, we're going to do 25 divided by 1.11. And we just type that into the calculator. And we've got 22.5225 and so on. And, well, this is money. This is in pounds. So we want to write this as two decimal places. So to two decimal places, we count one, two numbers after the decimal point. We look at the next one. If it's five or above, round up. If it isn't, leave it as it is. 
So we're going to leave it as it is. So it's going to be £22.52. pence. So that's the price of the hat in Spain. In the UK, it's £22. So it's cheaper, it's less in the UK. And one of these for you to try. So give this one a go. This time we've got a phone that costs £289 in the UK and €320 Euros in Ireland. The exchange rate is £1 is equal to €1.11. Is it cheaper in the UK or Ireland? So again, we've got the same exchange rate. So £1 is €1.11. Euros. And if we want to change €320 Euros into pounds, we're going to divide. So to go from pounds to euros is times by 1.11. To go from euros to pounds is divide by 1.11. So it's 320 divided by 1.11, which is 288.2882 and so on. So again, we're going to give this answer to two decimal places because it's money and we only do money to two decimal places. So it's going to be 288 pounds. Is it closer to 28p or 29p? It's closer to 29p. We've got five, a number five or above in the third decimal place. So in Ireland, the phone costs 288 pounds and 29p. In the UK, it's £289, so it's very slightly cheaper in Ireland. Okay, so that was our week nine review. We have an assessment now available. The link will be in the description on YouTube or at the bottom of the page on the website.